Wow, 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 look what's been happening. Uh, nothing, really. Surprisingly, even though we're getting so close to a supposed release of RTX 3000, there has been like no info about them, apart from what we can gather from leaks and just speculation. So that is the main people to warn exactly what is going on. Why are NVIDIA so reluctant to share any information, despite there being so many leaks surrounding this release? And what about the giant threat? To the RTX 3000 launch that is looming over the horizon and that is Big Navi. Well, so far it's looking to be a very, very interesting new generation for graphics cards, almost just because of this entire uncertainty around RTX 3000 and also Big Navi. Because if rumors about an RTX 3090, a dual GPU cards are true, then that's gonna be absolutely sick. And also, I'm still hoping that my idea of having a capture card bundled into graphics card, which I discussed in this video up in iCards, is gonna come true, but we'll see. And even even further improvements to the NVENG encoder from Turing will also make the RTX 3000 graphics cards amazing and so far there have been leaks of huge improvements between 20 and 40 percent between the 2000 series and 3000 series graphics cards which is insane. So that's all well and good and it looks like Nvidia may want once away just run away with it this generation. However then there's Big Navi which we know little about but we can infer quite a few things. Firstly, there have been a ton of rumours that the new Big Navi flagship will be competitive in price and performance to an NVIDIA flagship, which is something that AMD has really struggled with, and which hasn't been producing any cards to try and battle it out in a high range, probably since the Radeon 7, which was kind of an attempt at that, but it's kind of just failed miserably. Like, since then, they haven't really been doing that, with probably the most high-end cards since being an RX 5700 XT, which is a fine card, but again, loses out to more high-end NVIDIA cards and also lacks a whole bunch of features people love about NVIDIA cards. But let's talk about ray tracing for a second, shall we? Because even though it finally looks like NVIDIA has managed to convince more and more developers to have ray tracing support in their games, so it looks like a few years too late, we may finally get into a point where ray tracing is really worth it and enough games use ray tracing that no matter what kind of gamer you are, you could use it. However, then comes something that may really mess up this whole situation for NVIDIA, and that is that probably big Navi graphics cards will support ray tracing because both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 will support ray tracing and they are based on AMD GPUs. So, who would win in this ray tracing battle? Well, my bets are probably still on NVIDIA's, because at this point they will not only have two generations of ray tracing experience, but also something tells me that there still won't be any super, super high-end graphics card in the big Navi lineup that will go head-to-head -head with the 3080 Ti and 3090 if that exists. But who knows, maybe AMD will find their own way of having a really, really great performance in ray tracing in these new big Navi cards, because clearly they've had enough experience with it already, seeing how they managed to bundle that technology with the Xbox Series X and the PS5. So we'll see what comes of this. And this ray tracing battle, I think, is what could decide this generation, because ray tracing games, I believe, are finally getting there. And I think that people will finally stop thinking of it as a useless feature. And instead, it will have more of a mindset of, hey, let's buy this graphics card because of this, and also maybe let's buy it for any future games that will support ray tracing, even if there aren't too many games that you're into right now that support it. I mean, hey, I'm tempted to get a ray tracing graphics card just because of Cyberpunk 2077, but also I don't have that kind of money. But it would be really awesome to maybe review one of them once it comes out. So hey, subscribe to this channel so there's at least some kind of hope that in video will send a review sample, even though I very, very highly doubted that this channel's gonna grow that much by the time they come out in probably in August. And hey, if you wanna, you know, show some extra love to the channel, maybe support it on Patreon, as in one dollar a month is long way and having make way better videos and also videos on way more interesting topics. The link to that's gonna be down in the description below, where you will also find a link to my Discord, where you can talk to me over about this or whatever else, really. So I think that's really it, so I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. If you didn't subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in what I like next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.